You've all seen the documentaries. Food Inc., Forks Over Knives, Fed Up, Super Size Me, Cowspiracy, Earthlings. You're outraged for a few hours, maybe even a few days. You tell yourself you'll eat better, pay more attention to what you buy and consume, but how long does that really last for? And then you fall right back into your old eating habits. Hi, I'm Sam. Hi, I'm Kaylee. And we've had this experience watching food documentaries many times over. So when we were given the ability to choose what kind of project we wanted to do for our politics and food class, we decided that we wanted to explore the reasons on why it's so hard for someone to change their diet and also try it for ourselves. So over the next two weeks, we're only going to be buying and consuming foods that are actually vegan. And what that means is we won't be eating any meat, dairy, um, eggs, any animal products or animal byproducts. We'll also be interviewing industry professionals as well as everyday people to try to find out the reasons on why it's so hard to change your diet permanently. So, so yes, this, this is, is another, another food documentary. documentary. What does it mean to be vegan? Um, a lot of people ask me about this when they take my classes. There's a lot of confusion between veganism and vegetarianism. A lot of times if you say you're vegetarian, they think you're vegan and vice versa. So um, vegans eat absolutely no animal products or anything that was produced by an animal. So they do, not only do they not eat meat, like a vegetarian wouldn't eat meat, they also don't eat milk. Um, so that means no dairy products. They wouldn't eat eggs. Most of them don't eat honey because it's produced by a bee. Um, so they don't eat anything at all that came from an animal. Their diet would be completely plant-based. So today it's day one of going vegan and it's breakfast time. So I'm eating a banana, some grapes, and some chocolate almond milk. I chose to buy almond milk just because obviously it's vegan, it's not dairy. Um, it actually has 50% more calcium in it than regular milk and it tastes pretty much the same gonna take a look at the inside of our fridge right now to show you what I've pretty much been eating. So a lot of almond milk, cashew milk I've been drinking, got a ton of fruits and vegetables, a lot of apples, clementines, an orange, kiwi, cucumbers, lettuce, got a bunch of tomatoes, carrots. Okay, so it's day one, right now it's lunchtime. We made a pita pocket, there's some apples, peppers, um, cucumbers, carrots, and I checked the pita bread, there's no milk in it, it's made with water. And then I also picked this dressing just because there's also no milk or animal products in it. So right now it's the end of day one. I just kind of wanted to check back and reflect on everything that's happened today. So I feel like overall it went really well off to a great start going vegan I definitely noticed myself checking nutrition labels on the back of food more often than I usually do just to make sure that the ingredients in the food I'm eating are actually vegan and that I didn't just assume they were vegan one of the first things that comes to mind with vegans or vegetarians is people always ask about protein am I getting enough protein you know how do I get my protein if I'm not eating meat and really there are plenty of plant-based sources of protein you just need to know what they are you need to be aware um, one of the other issues with going completely vegan is that uh, it can be difficult to absorb certain nutrients from plants or more difficult than it is from an animal product, especially certain minerals. Like for instance, zinc is an example that they always use where the amount of zinc that a meat eater or even a vegetarian might need where they're, where they're eating eggs and milk um, would be less than the amount of zinc that a vegan would need to be getting in their diet because it's just harder to absorb from plants. So it's not so much that it's dangerous as it is that you just have to be more knowledgeable about your diet. And I think a lot of us are really 
really not knowledgeable yeah. about our diets. So I just made myself a little snack. I made nachos with vegan cheese, salsa, banana peppers. And I actually tried the vegan cheese earlier for lunch and it was not bad. So today is day two. I'm starting off the day with some green tea with just some sugar in it. And then I'm just eating some clementines, kiwi, and grapes mixed together. I'm not eating as much as I usually do just because I have a cold and don't feel that well. But so far, so good. So it's day three. I'm just eating a salad for lunch. Um, some vegetables, apples, and then some vegan bread with peanut butter on it. And then balsamic vinaigrette dressing. Um, check the labels on all of them so they're all vegan. So right now it's the end of day two. What I did start doing today was taking a multivitamin just because I'm not sure exactly what nutrients I'm getting or not getting by going vegan. So I just wanted to stay healthy, make sure I'm getting everything I need, vitamins and minerals. I know some friends in the past that actually tried to go vegan for a longer period of time and they didn't really know what they were doing so they became severely iron deficient, which obviously isn't good at all. So I don't think that would happen over one or two weeks, but just to be safe, just to make sure everything's healthy, I decided to do that today. Yes, I have seen a food document before. I watched Super Size Me a couple of years back, and it did not make me want to change my eating habits. I do not think that these diets the food documentaries want you to start are cost effective because they usually require high-end ingredients that usually cost more, and they're at markets that may just be inherently more expensive. I believe that food documentaries make you aware that there is a problem in the dietary system, but they don't tend to give you a easy fix to it, and they leave that to extrapolate in your own mind, which I don't think is helpful, because the people watching these documentaries have no dietary background and will not know what to do unless told. So it's day three, it's lunchtime, I did have time to come home between classes, so I made something more than just Cheerios. So I'm having a salad, there's some cucumbers, lettuce, carrots, bell peppers, and the same salad dressing from the day before, which is also vegan. So right now I'm gonna eat with my family. I'm eating vegan with just pasta and veggies. Um, but it's the same thing we had yesterday, so it should be good. From very early on in life, we learned to pair food with emotions, and those bonds are incredibly hard to break. In Kind of like the older parts of our brain, the deep centers of our brains are emotional parts of our brain. And when we see food, those parts activate immediately. Even before we get it into our, our system, we like get excited, like this is coming, let's enjoy this. So it's like chow down. And it gets hard to break those bonds because to break those bonds, we have to use a totally different part of our brain. It's a part of our brain that's more rational and slower. And so what happens is when we see food, we immediately want to eat it. And then if we want to stop from eating that unhealthy food, we have to pause and our frontal lobes have to suppress those deeper parts of the brain and say, no, no, that's not good for you. And that takes time. It also takes a lot of mental effort. And so it's hard for us to like stop that immediate gratification. We can do it, but it takes time and effort. And it also partly explains why we eat more or we eat bad food when we're tired, because we don't have enough mental energy to say, okay, let's stop this natural kind of Impulse. In this region to this region, we release chemicals as soon as we see seafood. And it's, it's, it's excitement, it's reward, it's pleasure. And it can happen from food, it can happen from drugs, it can happen even from water if you're, if you're dehydrated. And so this is kind of our reward network, our circuit of our brain. And uh, it gets overactive in any addiction, whether that addiction is food or whether, whether it's then we start to see some, some structural changes in those regions as well um, that will never go away. So like in heroin users, we see changes in the receptors there, and there's a, less of those receptors, and that makes them crave the, the, the drug. And we see the same thing in people that are addicted to high sugar foods, high salt foods, high fat foods, things like that. You don't see it so much with like a high protein diet, because none of us get addicted to that uh, so, so much. So we just went to Whole Foods. And they have vegan cupcakes. Finally. <laughs> so we're gonna try them. Really excited right okay. now. <laughs> it's good. Is it good? It's good. I need to try this. Alright, here we go. Mmm. 
This is actually really good. It tastes like a regular cupcake. For lunch today, we have some vegan chili, some potatoes, and Steamy. steamed peppers. Yum. Hey, so we're working on our project at school. And I just got a salad. It's an Asian style salad with like tofu and lettuce and sriracha and other fun stuff. <laughs> so right now it's day four. I feel like I haven't been getting a lot of protein in my diet. So I've been looking for specific foods that are vegan that also have protein. So a food that I love eating anyways, I actually eat all the time with pita bread and crackers is actually hummus. This one's caramelized onion balsamic hummus. Uh, there's all different types though. I really love it and it's great because I'm not getting a lot of protein right now. So I feel like this will definitely help. I think it's hard to get people to change their diets just because we're creatures of habit. We're used to the things we like. Um, we are used to the making the same things. A lot of times uh, you'll find that convenience foods aren't really easy to find for vegans. Okay, so all the things we're used to just being able to grab and like whip together a sandwich. Oh well, but there's dairy products in the bread, or there's, or there's, you know, if we're used to meat sandwiches, and what are you gonna put on it? No, it doesn't even have any cheese. Like, how do I make it a filling meal? Like, a lot of the quick and easy foods are are processed, prepared foods. And really, regardless of whether you're making the switch to vegan or vegetarian or just a more healthy lifestyle, getting rid of processed foods is is a big step along the way. And if you're going all the way to veganism, there's just not a lot of convenience foods left for you. So I think people aren't used to the idea of having to sit down and meal plan. They're not used to having to shop ahead of time and make lists and have ingredients and take time out of their week to prepare a meal or prepare ahead thinking like, oh, I have class all day or I have class over lunch. There's nothing I can get at school. What am I gonna do? I need to bring it with me. So today it's day five going vegan. Um, still pretty sick, have a cold still. So I just got this smoothie for lunch. It has a ton of fruit in it, has a lot of vitamin C, so hopefully it makes me feel better. And it's also vegan, so that's good too. It is day five of being vegan and I'm eating lunch right now. I have sweet potato, corn, and I'm also gonna have some hummus and some chips. I think that food documentaries kind of the people in them start with the basis of like knowledge of food and like how to eat when on a diet but it doesn't really show you like each step how to do it because it's a lot more difficult doing it than just watching someone else do it so today me and my mom decided to make some vegan brownies it can be hard to come by vegan desserts since most desserts have milk in them um, so or eggs so what we're going to be doing is making regular brownie mix but instead of adding eggs to them we're going to add some applesauce and just a little bit of oil and it should make them taste just about the same but just a little bit different and vegan so hopefully they come out good so we just got the vegan brownies out of the oven so I'm going to try one and see how it tastes These are actually really good. They taste pretty much like normal brownies. Um, if I didn't know they were vegan, I wouldn't have even guessed. They taste pretty much exactly the same. It is dinner time. For lunch today, I had some banana, peanut butter, and rice cakes, and some fruit. And right now, I just made myself a big bowl of beans. <laughs> and then I'm drinking some coconut water. I usually drink coffee every day before class, but this whole week I haven't been drinking any coffee. I can only drink it with cream in it. I just don't like it without cream, and that's not vegan. So I've tried to replace coffee with um, tea. So today I went to Dunks before class and got some iced green tea, and I'm hoping it's a little better for you than coffee with all that sugar and cream in it. So that's one good thing that's come out of this week. So it's day seven, I just got out of class. It's around 9.30 right now. I'm just gonna be eating a salad for dinner. It has some lettuce, carrots, cucumbers, and bell peppers in it. 
Okay, so it's been a week now since I started eating a fully vegan diet, and it's going well. The only thing that I notice is I'm not getting as full as I was when I was eating, like, the standard American diet. Um, but I've, like, watched videos and I've read articles that saying when you are vegan, um, you need to eat bigger portion sizes to make up for that, like, slab of meat that you're not eating. <laughs> to fill you up um so i think that's the main thing i'm going to try this week is to make sure i'm eating uh bigger portion sizes so i get full but other than that it's going really well so if somebody's making a switch to a vegan diet like i said one of the main focuses has to be on protein so one of the things that you can do to get protein or one of the concerns i should say with uh vegan or vegetarian versus meat is that you need what's called a complete protein proteins are made of building blocks called amino acids and you need to have all 20 amino acids available to your body to be able to build proteins at any given time. We don't really store amino acids individually. So in order, you think of it like the letters on keyboard, right? So if you're typing and there's a key missing, you can't, you can't write all the words, right? Like things start to come out incorrectly. So the same thing's true with amino acids. If you're trying to build proteins and you don't have all the amino acids available, then you're not going to be able to build those proteins. We call a protein that provides all the amino acids a complete protein. And all animal products provide complete protein, including things like dairy and eggs. But a vegan's not getting any of that. So they need to be able to get their protein from a plant source. Most of the time to do that, you have to put two separate plants together because most plants are lacking in one or another, one of the amino acids. So you have to take a plant that's lacking in amino acid A and put it together with a plant that's lacking in amino acid B, and then you create a complete protein by putting those two together. We call that a complementary protein. So some examples would be like, for instance, beans and rice. Beans and rice together make a complete protein. Individually, if you eat a meal with just beans, you're not getting a complete protein. Same thing with just rice. But if you make a meal where you've got both of those things playing a role, then that can be a complete protein. So today it's day 10, um, it's lunchtime, so I'm eating a salad for lunch. I have some cucumbers, carrots, lettuce, bell peppers, and then I'm eating a clementine and some pita bread and water. So I just got out of work, so I'm making some food. Um, I cut off some kiwi and then made toast with peanut butter. The uh, American Psychological Association publishes what they consider empirically supported treatments for different addictions. Uh, and they have one for obesity or for food addiction. And it's, a, it's essentially behavior therapy. And the idea is you want to figure out what cues there are to set this brain region off and prevent them from happening. Right? So if you know, you know, staying up the late and like binging on Netflix makes you like eat chips, you know, then the idea is to skip Netflix and those sorts of things. So try to figure out like the early cues and what's going to kind of kick you off, kick this brain region off, and then prevent that from happening so that you don't eat those, particularly the high caloric foods. So our two weeks is up and now it is time to conclude. Mm -hmm. So I thought going vegan went pretty well. Um, I mean, it definitely did at first. Near the end, there was a few times I 100% cheated, but <laughs> <laughs> overall, not too bad, so. And I think that speaks to the practicality of it. I think, personally, myself, I had a lot of meat and dairy cravings while I was vegan. Um, so that is one thing that is kind of hard. I think if we, did it, if we didn't have a time constraint for this project and we're able to do it longer, maybe those cravings would have subsided. Mm -hmm. um, so that is also something to think about. Probably for the two weeks, I ended up spending about $100 on food just for me. Um, and I think that is pretty affordable for groceries. Um, the thing that I struggled with is having time to actually cook nutritious meals and like get all the nutrients that I needed to stay full of energy and feeling full. And I know I talked about that in one of the other clips too, but that is something I really struggled with. I wasn't getting those um, complete proteins that um, Professor Cook had talked about. Um, and so yeah, if we were to do this again, that is definitely something that I would need to work on next time. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with the time constraints because when you're in college and you have a job also, you're just kind of driving to and from everywhere all the time. So for me, I had to set aside blocks of time to actually prepare something that was even vegan. 
and I also found myself not having time to do that. So I would actually go to class or work for however long, maybe six, seven, eight hours and not have any food with me because I was too lazy or didn't actually have time to prepare anything. So yeah, I think that's a big problem if you're on the go all the time. So overall, we said to find out if it's practical and the reasons why it's hard to change your diet. And I think there are a lot of factors that go into why it's so hard to change your diet. I think cost is definitely one of them mm -hmm. because for us, for one person, it wasn't too bad, but um, if you're feeding your family or if you eat more than we do, I mean, there's some people who can probably eat a lot more than we do, so I can see why the, those costs would add up. And then um, never, another problem um, is definitely like no matter what way you look at it, fresh fruits and vegetables are always going to be more expensive than some processed food that mm -hmm. may not be vegan. Um, so even just that fact alone, even if you do have the money to afford it, it's the simple fact that it's still more expensive than probably what you're used to eating. Mm -hmm. So I think there's also not a complete understanding of how to go vegan and also be healthy while becoming vegan. Mm -hmm. Like you could be vegan, but doesn't mean you're getting everything you need. There's a lot of vegan junk foods. I ate so many Oreos, <laughs> so many Oreos, and that's probably not good for you. Yeah. So I feel like <laughs> there's definitely an education piece that if you're actually trying to change your diet that much, you need to be educated on how to do it properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you don't end up hurting yourself, making yourself unhealthy. So. So another problem for me was anytime I went out to eat with people, friends or family, it was hard to find anything vegan on the menu that either didn't have tofu in it or wasn't a salad, which I've already been eating so many of that it was just ridiculous for me to order that because I've just been eating so many of those. Um, so I ended up actually cheating one time when I was out to eat with my friend at La Coretta because I couldn't find anything on the menu that didn't have like some sort some of something yeah. yeah pretty yeah, much it's hard so. especially and I think it'd be different if we live in like a big city because there's definitely more vegan places in say New York City or Boston um, but around here it's hard to go out and get an actual nutritious meal that's vegan that's not just a, like a salad we learned so much information just from Dr. Cook and Dr. Seshman um, about food habits and veganism and we already thought that we were pretty educated on the topic um, because we, this had both interested us for a while and we're in a class about food but from them alone we learned a lot so probably the average person on the American diet doesn't really know and if you're like us we didn't really know how to do it properly so probably other people wouldn't know how to do that either mm -hmm. so it really takes a lot of research um, to know what kind of foods you need to be consuming. So I think all these things are factors into why it's so hard to change your diet and why people don't. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed.